Hello guys and welcome to a brand new video. Today I'm here with The Disastrous Life of Psyche K Season 2 Episode number 5 and 6 Reaction Alright, the previous two episodes uh, the, the thing that happened in episode 3 was we went to, uh, what was his name? Psycho? Yeah, Psycho's place and we actually saw a little bit of change in him um, like, you know, obviously in the beginning he was kind of trying to like, you know, compete and like, you know, show everyone how great you know his wealth and everything is but obviously uh, like you know the people here they don't care about that you know like they were pretty bored with everything but after that they he made his house like an amusement park and everyone was pretty happy about it everyone like you know had a great time uh, and uh, yeah in the end we see um <clears throat> uh, kubayasu and uh, uh, kaido both of them saying that oh you know we had a great time next time come to our place which is how it is with friends and i'm pretty sure that he never really um was able to experience like that you know going to a friend's house hanging out them coming to your house hanging out something like that because obviously you know everything about him is money money and money he like you know he he, he puts so much focus in that that i'm pretty sure no one really even uh became his become his became his friends before so yeah his he realizes and he's changing little by little and uh, yeah that's kind of nice and uh, obviously uh, that was that and then there was the the other section where we get to meet a new character emu i think that was her name yeah um she <laughs> it's interesting how her personality not personality but how her whole character archetype kind of overlaps teruhashi but obviously since teruhashi is way more you know like what can i say like you know way more uh Ah, like you know people like put her like in a, like a pedestal of an angel or goddess that's why even though people like her you know like uh, she wasn't able to complete like you know, on even grounds against teruhashi it was kind of interesting to see and teruhashi also kind of had like a little you know like a little for a moment had a little rivalry with her and obviously when everyone just clearly told her that oh teruhashi is a goddess and an angel you are like a normal person and um, that's why we also like you so for Teruhashi it's like a, in a different scale the, the admiration or whatever it's in a different scale and she, she realized that and obviously Teruhashi after seeing that she realized that and she went away crying Teruhashi was like ah you see there you go <laughs> so yeah that was funny and um, yeah and uh, there was a few other sections but these two were the most important parts and uh, yeah we're getting more new characters i'm guessing we're going to get another new character who we saw in the opening um uh, the gyaru so let's see when we get to see her and uh, yeah let's get started this is episode number five yeah i'll be putting the subtitles and the timer here sync it to whichever is a preference and let's get started right here's a countdown three two one go <laughs> Hmm. <laughs> Wait, is that a rabbit? I saw it for the first time. Rematch, Rifuta was... <laughs> wow. All right, let's see. Oh my God, who the hell is this? Oh! P 
<laughs> oh my god. Yes. Second. Oh boy. Yep. Oh boy. Wow. <laughs> Mistake. Oh. Wow. Why? Yeah, why is she here? Oh my god. <laughs> oh boy. Wow, she is like you know, really like, confused about her own feelings. <laughs> hmm. <laughs> More or less. <laughs> You man. Oh my god. Oh, so she was testing the waters. Yeah. She was testing the waters and she realized that it's actually true. <laughs> wow. Bus kill. <laughs> wow. <laughs> Kura mochi. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> Oh, he did it. Wow. I don't... I don't think it's going to work like that. I don't think it's going to work like that. Yeah. The two queens. <laughs> Oh, <laughs> you can hear it. <laughs> oh, my God. Oh, <laughs> it hasn't been long. Oh, no, wait. Oh, no, the fan club. I forgot about it. They're going to be pissed at him. Emo vision? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Gifts of the Magi. Oh, what? <laughs> Hello. Ah. Oh my, yo! <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh wait. Hey, May 13th. That's my birthday. <laughs> wait, they're 13 and 14, oh my god. <laughs> <laughs> Mountains. <laughs> what a Momotaro this is. <laughs> yeah. Hmm. 
Oh uh, yeah. Oh, wow! This is the first time I saw Psyche actually <laughs> getting. <laughs> oh no! <laughs> yeah. Okay, what's he looking at? That's a lot of money. Yeah. That's <laughs> his eighty-six. <laughs> Wait, what? <laughs> wow. Yeah, he doesn't have enough money for it. Okay. Oh no, I feel like... Ah! Yeah! Okay, which is? <laughs> Wait, she brought... She bought it! Wait, what's happening? How did she get the money? Yeah. What's going on here? Oh, they sold it! Oh. They probably... Oh, yeah, there you go. They're... Oh no, he sold. Oh my god. Yeah. Wow. Oh, this reminds me of something. This is like a story like this. Where like, there's two people. Oh, hair and comb. You know that story? Someone cut her hair to get a comb for the, uh, something like that. I'll talk about it later. <laughs> wow. Oh, that's nice. That's sweet. Yeah. <laughs> like I was saying, um, it's that story. Like a, a girl had long hair and then there was that guy who wanted to buy a comb for her. Or something. <laughs> oh yeah and and we 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 know that cat you know that cat oh no yeah <laughs> wow the can side been <laughs> Why does he have a Kansai win? <laughs> but <laughs> What? <laughs> oh. <laughs> Wait. Oh. <laughs> oh my god. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god. Oh boy, when Huh Yeah, how is he going to find it out? 
Yeah. <laughs> Why? Yeah. <laughs> wow. He's <laughs> talking about much. Oh my god, here we go. I'm just not a rat. <laughs> Cat. Oh. <laughs> wow. Talking about Doraemon. Yeah. Wait, he knows? <laughs> what is What is this? Yeah. I'm pretty sure hamsters are also quite popular. Oh, he he was just buttering him up. Okay. <laughs> oh boy. Oh really? Oh no. <laughs> Yo! Yeah, well, there you go. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay. Uh, one day. What? Oh my God! He's going to be like, start running now. Yeah. Yeah, it's going to be like start running. Wow, I knew it. <laughs> yup, he she he won't like this. <laughs> oh no, he's going to be oh god, this is be crazy. Oh no. Uh -huh. No, no, I don't think he's, he's trying something else. <laughs> I'm scared. Okay. Oh my god. She's... Shun. Oh no, I feel like she's going to... Ah! <laughs> I'm not a dog. Bo oh my god. <laughs> Yo, stop. <laughs> he brought the clothes that she was wearing. <laughs> oh yeah yeah i feel like terash would have been the best option here but yeah yeah who oh oh my god <laughs> no maybe he he'll, he'll actually do a good job i think
No, no, I feel like he'll be a good one. Yeah, there you go. Yeah, he takes care of stuff. We've seen that. Oh. What? Ricky Jr. Hmm. Uh. Okay. Nice. Ricky Jr. Two. <laughs> okay. Yeah. <laughs> Ah. <laughs> wow. <laughs> like old cartoon. <laughs> Yo. <laughs> yeah. Oh. Uh. <laughs> no, I'm good. Oh! <laughs> Yo! Oh! <laughs> Hello. Ah. Oh yeah. <laughs> oh no. No, stop. Don't do that. <laughs> He's like Yeah. <laughs> oh. <laughs> wow. Hey, do you just try to stab him or something? Oh. Oh no, please stop. Don't do that. <laughs> What is he doing? He's gonna break his whole house. <laughs> oh no. Oh. <laughs> this is such a weird scene. I, I knew he was gonna break his house. Yeah. At first. Oh? Then what? Ooh. <laughs> oh my god. Ha! <laughs> wow. Massage. Oh no. What? Oh! <laughs> he'll be like, oh, this is. Like I said, he, he'll say, this is pretty good. Yeah. <laughs> wow.
Hey, yeah. <laughs> wow, that was crazy. <clears throat> All right. And that's it. Okay, this episode. Um, we begin with Imu versus Teruhashi again. Obviously, Imu was like, you know, like, he sees Teruhashi again and all everyone's like, you know, kind of flocking towards her. So she feels very, you know, she thinks like, ah, like, you know, they, she, she's picking a fight with me or whatever. Obviously, Teva, this is just Tevashi, like, you know, her, her natural aura always exuding out of herself. And <laughs> like she, she's not even actively trying. And you know what inter what's interesting about this girl, Imu, is that she herself is so confused about the fact that <laughs> she's also someone who is like, you know, charmed by Teruhashi. And she doesn't like, you know, realize it. Like some of the times it kind of comes out of her, like, you know, mouth, like, She's like, oh, like, you know, Teruhashi has come to my class to tell me what a nice person. And then she's like, wait a minute, why am I, like, you know, why am I complimenting her? She's supposed to be my enemy. And that's the, like, you know, funny thing here. Like, even she who is considered as a rival of her <laughs> is also, to some extent, charmed by her. <laughs> but anyways, um, <clears throat> obviously her prides come even, like, you know, before that. So she is very you know she's not happy she's like you know like thinking what to do <coughs> about Teruhashi <coughs> and she realizes that um, Saiki is someone who she talks to frequently and is always happy talking to him so at first she's like wait a minute is this really the person who she he, she likes because she's very he's very plain he's very normal ordinary you know average all throughout so yeah how can someone like her like psyche and then <clears throat> you know she kind of thought about it and she kind of kept it away and didn't think about it much after that and uh, later on teruhashi comes in and teruhashi talks to her about the uh, i think like a club or something beautification committee or something like that and here we can see you know when, when she comes in her class she's like oh teruhashi has come here like you know to ask me about this and then she's like wait a minute why am i getting like you know like happy about it <laughs> i'm supposed to be angry i'm supposed to be her enemy and while all of this was happening she probably thought you know what let me test the waters because yeah i did get like you know like the information on psyche and it seems as if you know like she talks to him a lot she might like him but there's a very small possibility of that happening because i don't see someone like her talking to someone who is average throughout you know which is psyche so she was like ah let me just test the waters i'm obviously like you know like i'm probably wrong about it and she just said like oh yeah i, I like someone you know like it's, it's in your class she's a he's a senpai his name is San psyche uh, psyche Kusuo. and well there you go there there as soon as she says that teruhashi's face completely just stiffens and as soon as that happens imu realizes imu's like all right so yeah that was true so she really does like him and 
she's like all right now i'm 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 going to like you know like i'm going to go and <clears throat> try to get psyche and uh, you know like that's how i'm going to defeat her now funny thing here psyche knows about all of this and he's the one who orchestrated this because he thinks what's going to happen is if emu likes her him and uh, then she will get like you know like probably get frustrated and won't like you know talk to him anymore and like you know try to move away and obviously after seeing that emu won emu is also going to move away so he'll be alone and he'll win that's that's what he wants however i thought that that's definitely not what's going to happen i thought that if emu actually did something like that then teruhashi would even get more fired up and is going to like you know, try to put more advances on psyche in her own awkward manner and that would make psyche and and seeing that i feel like emu, emu would even try to do it even more which was going to make psyche's life even worse because he doesn't want any of this you know so i thought that was what was going to happen it was going to work in a reverse manner and i was like why psyche like you know like uh, like that, it's definitely not going to go the way you think it is going to go it's going to have like a counter effect to this and uh, yeah i thought that that was going to happen so obviously emu goes and tells psyche that oh yeah you know what like you know like uh, what did she say i like you or something wait a minute oh no she says like do you have a girlfriend or something like that yeah and psyche all the second is like giving uh, affirmative signs all the time because he wants that to happen so that Teruhashi sees that and Teruhashi backs off. And <clears throat> you know what the funny thing is here? <laughs> Psyche is probably, probably like the, the next question she asks is, oh, you like me even more than Teruhashi? And he kind of bends his finger and then like you know, kind of gives him, her the thumbs up. And <clears throat> she says like, oh, I finally beaten her. Now, you know what? Oh, yeah, what I was saying. This is probably the first time someone actually picked her over Teruhashi. And I feel like that was the main reason why after that, you know, like she, he, she started getting embarrassed after looking at Psyche because, you know, like he picked her instead of Teruhashi. While Teruhashi was like that, like, you know, unsurpassable, like, you know, like thing that she saw after coming to the school. And everyone was going to a Teruhashi. So suddenly sees someone actively choosing her, even though Teruhashi is also involved in the whole story. You know, like she she probably you know she probably genuinely kind of like you know felt nice about it. And that's where like you know Psyche's calculation went a little bit wrong. So I don't know what is going to happen, but I feel like Emu is after this. Emu is also going to genuinely like psyche about it because just because of this you know because psyche tried to do this psyche tried to kind of make them like you know actually go away from him this completely backfired and now not only <laughs> teruhashi is there emu is also going to be included in this whole nonsense that psyche will be like oh my god so yeah it actually worked completely oppositely I thought this might lead to another thing, but it did not lead to that. Is I thought that the fan club would get pissed off at this because you know the fan club genuinely wants Teruhashi's happiness, and he said the fan club said something like, "Oh, like you know, like don't make Teruhashi cry or whatever the hell they said." I remember. So I thought that was going to happen, and Psyche after that would probably realize that, "Oh my God, like you know, what I did is making my life even worse because now the fan club is after me." So you know, I thought that was that was another way this could have gone. But it completely went in a direction I was not expecting. Like I said, uh, after seeing uh, Psyche choose him over Teruhashi, she genuinely kind of started liking Psyche after that, I'm guessing. But we'll see, you know, we'll see. I'm, I'm pretty sure that's what happened here. And <laughs> what Psyche wanted, it completely worked in an opposite manner. And now he's stuck with <laughs> Emu as well. Like, I don't know. Let's see. I'm, I'm, I'm thinking that's what happened there in the end. You know, that whole Emu vision or whatever. Anyways, um, so okay, so after that we get to see um, uh, both uh, what's her name, uh, Psyche's mom and dad. Their birthdays are here, like you know, thirteenth May or fourteenth May, and uh, <laughs> like the 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 mom brought uh, wait no, oh no, he brought the mom like a mannequin of him, and wait, what did the mom buy? I forgot. Just a sec. 
I was thinking of what to get him. Alas, oh no, she brought him a mannequin of him. Wait, what? Oh wait, both of the oh my god. Oh yeah, that's what there were two of them. I was thinking, why is there two? Oh, <laughs> he brought her the mannequin. Why did his like his mom also? Br what? Wait a minute. Last year I got him a life size man. Wow, so that means he brought her a mannequin and she brought him a mannequin of him. So both of them bought two, the one one mannequin each and gave it to each other. Okay, that's weird. Really weird. Like I can understand <laughs> why the dad brought a mannequin and gave it to the mom. But why did the mom buy a mannequin of him and give it to him? What is he going to do with that? <laughs> I don't know. Oh my god, it's crazy. Alright, um, so okay, so after that, um, they are like, you know, kind of going to buy the uh, gifts and kind of bump to, 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 with each other and the psychic's dad was like, oh, I'm going to the mountains and while um, I'm going to the cut, <laughs> cut across in the mountains <laughs> and she's like, oh, I'm going to the river. I need to wash the clothes on the river. Was this a Momotaro reference? For example, I, I think, I think so. Like the, I think the, the, the old lady went to the river to wash some clothes and the, the old man went to the mountains to cut some bamboo or something. Or was it the bamboo cutter story? Oh my God, I'm mixing things up. Obviously the bamboo cutter story, like a Kaguya Hime story, um, I think it was a bamboo cutter who went to the mountains to cut bamboo. But in Momotaro, where did the old man go? Did the old man go to, oh, I don't remember. Anyways, but I'm pretty sure that, that, that was a reference here. Probably a Momotaro reference. <laughs> now, okay. Now, after that, Psyche's like, oh, I brought like in a few movies. Let me watch that. And he sees that the mannequins was in the place where the movies were. <laughs> and Psyche's like, what the hell did they do with my movies? And then he's like, oh, you know what? I'm kind of scared about the whole situation. And he uses clear voice to see the dad looking at a huge teddy bear, like 280,000 yen. My God. And, you know, the dad takes out the purse and he's like, oh, I have like 300 yen left. Like, it's like, hang out, he won't buy it. And then he goes to see her mom, his mom, and his mom is like, you know, buying like a, looking at like a cupboard or whatever. And then she says like, oh, this is too big. It won't fit in our house. And Saik is like, okay, thank God. And he's, he's content. He's like, okay, thank God my parents are not buying something weird. And the day of the birthday has come, you know, like, um, uh, like they have food and everything. And it's time to reveal the birthday presents. And oh boy, the mom actually brought the, um, the, the, the case. And as soon as the, the, the showcase, they show, show it to the dad. The dad is like, uh, obviously I was confused. I was like, why is he acting like that? But then the answer comes out later on. Uh, dad sees that and dad's like, oh no, it's fine. It's, I'm, I'm very happy. And she, he says like, I brought like a uh, present for you and the big teddy bear. Saik is confused. Saik is like, wait a minute, how did he get the money from? And then he reveals that it's like a do it yourself thing. And there you go. That's when the mom is also like, oh. So yeah, at this point it was pretty confusing. I was like, why are they acting like this? And you know, as, as it kind of hit me at that moment, I'm like, wait a minute, did she like sell her stuff or something? But turns out she did not sell it, he sold his stuff. So basically what happened is like to make space in the house, she, I don't have my handicraft tools or swing machine anymore. I sent it to my parents' house to make space for the cupboard. And the dad sold his plastic models or the like, you know, the, the, which, stuff which they she, he would put in the display case to buy the the cabinet so they uh, no not cabinet so to buy the teddy bear so there you go this is like this is like a very nice scene obviously because they try to sacrifice their own stuff for the other person's happiness and like i said i've i remember there a story being like this as far as i can remember there was a girl 
who had a very long and beautiful hair something like that and then there was a guy and uh, i don't remember what the girl did but i remember what the oh no, i don't even remember what the guy did like what happened is like i think like they had like i don't know birthday or something like that they wanted to give some present to each other the girl because her hair was so beautiful the guy wanted to present her like a comb and the comb was pretty expensive so he does something he sells something which i don't remember and buys a comb while the girl she also wanted to buy something for the guy and she cut off her hair sold her hair to get the money and bought that thing so obviously the hair is gone and the guy gives her the comb while the girl also probably gave him something which he sold to get that comb or something like that i i, I don't remember what the story's name is i remember nothing so i can't even search it on the internet you know what Oh boy, let me see if I can find it. Oh, the gift of the monkey. Oh, that's it. Oh, that was the title. Ah. There you go. The gift of the monkey. Yeah, yeah, that was the name. Okay, I remember now. Okay, there you go. It was a title in itself. Oh my god. But wait a minute. Um. Okay, uh, wait, where is the plot? Uh, okay, uh, you yeah. She has only uh, to buy a present for her husband, Jim. She visits a nearby shop of a hairdresser who buys Della's long hair. Okay. Oh, a watch. Okay. Uh, used to buy a platinum pocket watch. Chain. Pocket watch chain. Okay. The Jim comes home from work. Della admits to have sold her hair to buy the chain. Jim gives Della her present, a set of ornamental combs, which she will be able to use unless her, until her hair goes back out. Della gives him Jim the watch chain and he tells her that he sold the watch to buy the combs. While the gifts that Jim and Della gave each other cannot be used, they knew how they uh, far they went each other to show their love and invaluable the true love is. The story ends with the narrator comparing the sacrificial gifts of love to those of biblical magi. Okay, uh, there you go. So yeah, that okay. That was the title in itself. I was just talking about the story. I'm like, yeah, I've, I've, I know the story. I know everything. It's few part portions I forgot. I just don't remember the title. That was the title. There you go. <laughs> okay so yeah that was that and it shows that pretty nicely and how these two really genuinely cares about each other and yeah you know psyche says like yeah the presents are not in, in themselves but it's the feelings behind them that's actually important so there you go <clears throat> all right after that we see psyche um talking about animals how it seems like they're cute but they're actually plotting world domination in their head <laughs> oh god and then he suddenly suddenly runs across a hamster who has kansai dialect and i'm like why <laughs> why does he have a kansai dialect <laughs> anyways um and the hamster is like very like you know haughty he's like oh like you know like i'm, I'm such a cute little thing you know like bring me to my owners and the psyche is like oh i can't be bothered and in the end, he was like, oh, like, you know, please help me out. Like, you know, I want my, to go back to my own house. I just want my air conditioning, uh, like, you know, house back. And <laughs> I just want to just lay around and have food come to me. That's what I want. <laughs> and, oh my God. And he says, like, um, oh, and then we get to meet Amp. Amp comes in. And Amp, uh, oh, I love the whole, like, you know, conversation or like a little uh little what do you call it like a little competition they had about merch like the the hamster says like oh i want to like you know like i want to, I'm, I'm kind of like a mascot character of this show, so i want like merch for mine while amp is like huh who do you think you are i'm a, i'm a cat i'm a cute cat i'm i'm getting my merch before you get your merch um i do wonder i'm pretty sure there is probably merches for them uh, you know like in in like in japan for amp and like you know this hamster so yeah, I'm pretty sure there is much for them. <laughs> so yeah, their their wishes end up ended up coming true, I guess. And <laughs> Amp says, "Hello, I'm a cat. Like, I'm get I'm getting a merge before you. Know, you. I don't have any competition." And the hamster says, "Cats are so overdone." This part, the blue robot cat. Obviously, he's talking about Doraemon. Cute kitty with a big ribbon. Who is this who, that he's talking about? Cute kitty with a big ribbon? 
cat with a big ribbon self-destructing red cat i don't uh, I'm, i probably know them but I, it's not coming to my mind who are these two what references are these two obviously the uh, the, the robot uh, blue cat ro uh, robot is obviously doraemon but the other two who are they self-destructing cat and the one with the big ribbon i have no idea i probably know them but it's not coming to my mind but anyways if you know let me know in the comments which which characters were uh, the hamster referencing to <laughs> I love how Arm tries to eat him after that. <laughs> Psyche like, you know, kind of gets both of them. And, uh, you know, like, the hamster is like, oh, I'm just lonely. I just want a place to live. And Arm is like, all right, I'm going to show you to you. And <laughs> Arm actually kind of sniffed out the, the, his actual house. And it's kind of impressive. And uh, yeah, and uh, the hamster is like, oh, finally I'm home and sees the owners and he's, she's like, oh, I'm home, you guys. And as he was running, he sees them actually brought another hamster. They, and the dad is like, oh, don't like, you know, forget to like, you know, protect, uh, like, you know, keep the hamster safe this time. You know, don't let it run away like the previous one. The kid was like, yes, dad, I'm going to do that. And the hamster is like, what? What is this? They're not even searching for me. He just brought another hamster. Oh my god, it's sad. Pretty sad if you think about it. But yeah. Um, okay, now he's he has no one now. And uh, uh, Saki brought him to school to uh, make, make him give uh, the hamster to someone so that they can take care of him. And the first day, uh, the hamster goes with Hyro. And I knew Hyro was going to make him do like, you know, those you know, the runs and everything. Because then he's very hot blooded and everything, and like he he names him Chicken Fillet or whatever the hell. <laughs> so yeah, he's completely just out of will because he had to run so much. Next is Kaido. Now I thought Kaido was probably going to take care of him, but eh, he did take care of him. But his antics were so crazy that Hamske, uh, oh no, not Hamske. Sorry, why? I, I... <laughs> oh my God, <laughs> like <laughs> it's funny that. Even when I was watching the like you know show, always whenever I was seeing him, always the name Hamske was coming to my mind, because obviously he's a hamster and like you know like we know like another hamster from another show, which is Overlord and his name is Hamske. So Hamske, that name Hamske was always coming to my name. That's why I suddenly called him Hamske here. <laughs> this hamster, you know, um. He, he like you know he, he was pretty fine here you know like he, he would have probably had a good time with Kaido but Kaido was so crazy his antics his tune of your antics that he like you know the hamster is just wasn't able to sleep so scared every time he did something so yeah it's not working next is Yumehara and Yumehara starts putting dresses on him and he's like what the hell this is constricting let me move and yeah, I've seen a lot of owners do this, like, you know, like, put clothes on their, on their, on their pets. Yeah, like, unless and until it's cold or something, I don't think that's, yeah, like, if it's cold and everything, alright, you can put, you know, like, warm clothes on them. I guess it's fine. But in a normal situation, yeah, I'm, I'm pretty sure the pet doesn't appreciate that. <laughs> I'm sick, it's like, what the hell, not, I again called him Hamske. God damn yeah uh, the hamster was like yeah uh, this is not it and then not only that he keeps she keeps talking to uh ham the hamster about kaido and yeah now after that uh, she, uh psyche tries to give it to uh give the hamster to teruhashi and i thought teruhashi would probably do a good job you know taking care of him but turns out teruhashi you know um, has like a cat and yeah he cannot she cannot take him with them so there you go unfortunate and uh, in the end we see nendo come in and nendo's like oh like you know let me take him and obviously the hamster was like oh my god i'm not going with this guy he's going to he's going to fry me up and eat me or something like that he's going to do <laughs> but no i knew that like you know kaido would probably be the one who would uh, not kaido sorry uh nendo would probably be the one who's going to take care of him the best because we've seen him before he actually takes a lot of care into the stuff that he has and we've seen that, you know, that's like one of his good qualities. 
uh, probably because he helps out his mom, you know, all the time. He, I think he can also cook well or something. I don't remember. Yeah, something like that. Like he's pretty homely. Like you know, like he can take care of a lot of like you know things like pets and stuff. And he's he's pretty organized and everything. Even though like you know most of the time he's just clueless about everything and just completely his head is empty. These situations he's pretty nice about it and he's pretty good. So I knew he, he would be fine with um. Uh, Nendo and yeah Nendo takes a good care of him you know like he, he changes the thing and he even talks about how he also had another hamster before and you know the hamster this hamster was like okay this guy is a genuinely nice person and there you go yeah I guess I'm, I'm guessing the like you know uh, the hamster will live with him from here onwards that's nice he, he got a he got a home all right the next scene uh, is um Wait, just a second. I'm reading the letter now. Okay, the next scene is like the the massage that uh, Kusuke gave to uh, them on the birthday gift. Okay, um, warning: the chair is for. Wait a minute. Just a sec. Okay, warning: the chair is for mom only. If anyone else uses the chair, it will discharge a powerful electric current. Be careful. <laughs> <laughs> I'm guessing the dad didn't even read this. So oh, it's only going to work with uh, like uh, the mom. Like the uh, dad cannot use it. And yeah, obviously it kind of gives a shock to him. <laughs> and he's like, I'm going to like his place, and I'm going to complain to him. And I guess like you just want to go on a vacation. Stop it. Okay, now the mom is like, okay, let me just like, you know, like, you know, rub your shoulders. And she's even like, oh, Psyche, let me do it for you too. And obviously Psyche's shoulder is just completely like a brick or whatever, like very hard. And the dad is also like, what the hell is up with you? you know? And I was like, yeah, he's probably so stressed out with all the different antics he has to face in his school, in his home and everything. Like, that's why, you know, it's like this. And he's just stressed out. And... <laughs> I love how the dad takes the opportunity to start <laughs> whacking him with a stick. The stick breaks completely. And then he brings like a metal pipe, the metal pipe also breaks. And then he brings like a massage, like you know, that thing, the 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 one you use like an you know, outside. And then the roads and everything. And I knew he was gonna break his house by doing this. And there you go, his house almost breaks. But um Saki had a nice time, so he reverted the time and made the house okay again. And then Saiki was like, you know what, yeah, you know what, I, I feel like I might like this, like, you know, solder massage thing. Let me go and try it myself. He goes to the under the waterfall and then he uses the stone massage, like, you know, the stone falls on his, uh, like, you know, uh, body. And yeah, he, he's, he's pretty, like, you know, happy about it. He's like, ah, this is quite nice. And suddenly he meets an old woman who's come to wash clothes. <laughs> totally random, obviously, the whole story i'm guessing that was that reference or whatever but yeah he comes back and he's like okay sits on the stair gets a shock and he realizes like oh the electric shock actually worked out pretty well for me and my shoulder <laughs> and it worked so well that he he's like you know he almost like kind of punched a hole through the house so yeah it worked a bit too well but anyways that was that episode it was pretty hilarious and let's see what the next one brings. This is episode number six. Yeah, episode number six. Let us begin. I'll be putting the subtitles and the timer here. Sync it to whichever is a preference. And let's get started. All right, here's the countdown. Three, two, one, go. Okay.
The psycho conglomerates luxurious cruise. Oh, psycho's back again. What is this? <laughs> oh, psycho's here. <laughs> yeah, I'm going to the. I'm going to outer space, you know. Yeah. Wow. Mm, damn. <coughs> Privately. Hey. Oh. <laughs> what condition? Ah. Oh, any everyone. <laughs> she thinks psych is going to come. Yeah, I don't know. Is he going? I don't know. I'm pretty sure Mera's going to come, definitely. And Kaido's going, so she's also going to come. There you go. Yumara's going to come. And Mera will be like... <laughs> I need to... Oh! <laughs> Wait, is Psyche really going? Yeah, Psyche's... Yeah... Yeah, I'm also thinking about it. Yeah... Uh, eight, just a second. Oh! Is Takashi? You think they'll be, they'll be Takashi with them? <laughs> yeah! <laughs> Takashi! God damn Takashi! Damn! Wow. Wow. Ah, I feel like Psyche is going to have a nice time. Like dessert and everything. Oh, this happened. Oh my god, wow. What? <laughs> hopefully, hopefully everything is okay. Yeah, he said the maintenance was rushed. Wow, this actually happened. She still has her aura. I feel like psychic and... Yeah. Oh boy. Shipwreck of Psychic. <laughs> wow. <laughs> yeah, well, how did it happen? Oh. <laughs> Wait, calamity. <laughs> Wait, the number, it was. Oh, wow. <laughs> Deep. What? Oh, yeah, seasickness. Yeah. Damn. <laughs> Food pantry. 
Yeah. <laughs> no. Oh my god, that's how he woke up. <laughs> wow. Yeah, that. So, what happened to the ship? Did it get completely annihilated or something? Where's the shipwreck? <laughs> Day one. <laughs> Interruption. <laughs> Day one. That means there'll be a lot of days. What? What is? What is this? Some kind of abandoned sh shipwreck? Oh my god! This is like a survival game. <laughs> what? Yeah? Yeah... I don't know about that. <laughs> yeah. Why? Oh! What's happened? Yeah! Why wasn't he able to do it? Ah! <laughs> That's it! Wait, what? What? Is he also seasick? Then what is that? Yeah, he is seasick. He did it with seasickness. <laughs> yeah, obviously. So his power went berserk or something? Oh, so he didn't even know when the ship got wrecked. That's why. Wow. <laughs> what do it turn? Yeah, that's why he wasn't able to prevent it. <laughs> Yeah! Oh my god. Okay. <laughs> wow. Ah. Uh. Hmm. That's why he wasn't able to do it. And that's why this part he was able to bring. A little bit. Nah, there you go. Location. Wait, what? Yeah. Okay. It is up to him. He has to do it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Okay. 
Hmm. Is he like in his house now? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> he came back to his house. <laughs> day two, there you go. Yeah, it, this is day two. Do you know? This is day two. Wow. No, that's not going to happen. <laughs> he just won. No, he's probably, I don't know. Yep, I knew that was what was happening. Yeah? <laughs> she just leaves. <laughs> oh no, did she like... I feel like she ate everything. She ate everything. Wait, she... Oh no. No, there you go. My god. Oh, that's Mera. <laughs> that's Mera. <laughs> She's like already hunting for food. <laughs> wow. Wait. Oh my God. Where did he, he, she get them? <laughs> yeah. Uh, what's happening? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Yeah, but she ate all the food before that. Like she said, she ate everything. Yeah, you're not listening? You guys. Oh my god. <laughs> <laughs> oh, the crockey. Damn. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. All she got. Ah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Ah, nice. Open water, they can teleport and hunt them. From, okay. 
Interesting. That's an interesting plan. Yes. <laughs> wow. Risky? What? Okay, stop. Damn. Yeah. <laughs> hmm. I found them float. Make them float, yeah. <laughs> Project Noah? <laughs> That's mad space. Yeah, he is like. Oh, he wants food. Damn. Luxury food? Okay. <laughs> yeah, he's not going to help. Well, it probably won't. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh <laughs> yeah oh wow the broad okay wow you know what he kind of does look like rohan <laughs> he kind of looks like him <laughs> oh my god, Mira ate it again. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Damn, what's happening here? <laughs> what's going on here? <laughs> wow! It's his book. What? <laughs> what is going on here? <laughs> Damn. Oh my God. Yeah. Well, because he's going back home. <laughs> Except for one person. He's to be one. Okay. Oh, he's probably going to do it quickly. Ah, he's, he's reinforcing them. Damn! 
puts a steel pipe. Ah. <clears throat> oh, wait, it ended. Oh, they're gonna continue this. Interesting. Okay. And is that it? Yep. <clears throat> okay, so this episode, this was like a the whole continuation. I have to say, like this whole episode was kind of focused on one thing, which is the uh, vacation and the shipwreck. So, all right, in the beginning, we get to see how um, you know everyone's talking about like you know uh, going somewhere and like you know like hanging out and. <laughs> Obviously, Psycho is like, huh, you peasants, you know, like I'm going to my, uh, like, you know, uh, private, uh, like, you know, island on my private cruise on and over there, I'm going to, uh, like, drive on in my private car and go to my private restaurant and like, you know, like, just like bragging about everything. <laughs> Obviously, Kubuyasu is like, you know, trying to deny it and he's like, huh, I'm pretty sure you're probably going to get shipwrecked. Ha ha. Well, and it ends up actually happening in the end <laughs> but obviously nendo is like oh let's like you know it'll be pretty nice if I, we can also go or something like that he says and he's like yeah i'm okay with that uh, but you have to bring teruhashi with you now obviously <clears throat> the funny thing is that they didn't even ask psyche because you know they were they were sure that yeah psyche is going to come with us and <laughs> That's why they didn't even like you know they didn't even bother asking Psyche. They were like yeah like you know like we're going and included Psyche within their group you know like even though they did, like you know like either way like they didn't even need to ask him about it and uh, obviously Teruhashi when uh, they go and ask Teruhashi and Teruhashi is like oh everyone is going that means Psyche is also going all right yeah I'm going and Yumehara was like oh Kaido's going so yeah I'm going. Mira is like, oh, uh, there'll be a lot of food. Yeah, I'm going. <laughs> so everyone <laughs> is like, yeah, we're going. And oh my god. <laughs> they were saying, I think, seven or was it eight? Just a second. Um... <clears throat> okay, uh, Psyche is thinking like, all right, so I'm pretty sure they are excluding me. Uh, they're saying eight people, so yeah, thank God I'm not in there. And then he suddenly hears Kaido saying, "Oh, Hiro has his club. You know, he cannot come." And Psyche's like, "Oh, Hiro has his club." And then he said, "That's probably taking Takahashi with them." <laughs> Takahashi comes in. Takahashi is like, "Oh, where are we going?" <laughs> Psycho's like, "Who the hell are you, dude? Go back." Psyche realizes it is not Takahashi; it's him. <laughs> <laughs> Why would Takashi go with them? <laughs> oh my god, this is crazy. And all right, after that, we see how, oh boy, Psycho, uh, <clears throat> the ship was actually not properly, like, you know, the maintenance was not properly done. 
he rushed everyone and said like oh like you know you guys you have to do the maintenance today or you'll get fired and uh, yeah make sure everything is fine everything is okay and we can actually use this ship obviously that's a big red flag because yeah you know like you know like a maintenance it needs time to do that and if you try to rush everyone to do that obviously the maintenance will be a sloppy job so yeah that's what happened and i'm guessing psyche was with them that's why nothing happened to the ship unless and until psyche went down completely because of the seasickness because you remember him saying like uh, as long as i am in the like you know like in the in the place nothing can happen but he went completely down because of the seasickness so yeah obviously he cannot do anything and Psyche is a re account is thinking about the uh, past and he's saying that yeah I should have realized that this is not going to go okay like there's so many signs that told me that something unlucky is going to happen but yeah I didn't like you know like kind of see them first of all a black cat was there then the name of the you know the whole thing was calamity uh six 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 one three one three oh I'm, I'm guessing one three is like for unlucky 13 and six 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 doku 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 no, I, I was thinking that the, the uh, I was thinking the the number had something to do with like you know some unlucky number or something like that but no it's like a normal number I'm guessing anyways um so yeah there's a lot of other like you know signs and uh, the, the shoelaces broke after that and all of other things yeah Saki didn't think about any of that and uh, ignored them so all right after that we see Kaido oh my god like so many things happen it's just crazy Kaido feels sick seasick and that's why Yumihara just wanted to be together with him for longer so she just threw away the seasickness pills which is also another big reason why Psyche wasn't able to become fine because we've seen like you know like Psyche takes some medicine and he, he becomes fine with that uh, especially in the previous episode where we saw uh, the allergy that he had you know the uh, medicine worked pretty well on him uh, usually he doesn't never get sick that's why you know like I, I feel like the medicine's effect on him is even more quicker you know because he never takes any medicine so it's like completely new for him it works very well like people who just always takes medicine the 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 amount of like you know like effect of the medicine kind of dwindles down day by day but for him it's completely new so the medicines work very quick on him so i'm pretty sure the seasickness medicine would have worked very nice on him because he never went on a ship and this is the first time and uh, yeah but yeah you may have threw it away I love the fact that after that, like, you know, like, uh, they kind of recount the, the, the story and Kaido says like, oh, I, I became sick. I you know, went to sleep and kind of went to sleep and I woke up and I'm here in the middle of the, like, you know, like ocean. And he says, what the hell is this? Like on top of him, there's like, <laughs> there's a, um, like a, like a caption called shipwrecked day one. He's like, oh, this is some bad stuff. You know, why is it written day one here? <laughs> It's like starting of a like you know survival horror game or whatever the hell you know like you know those games where you get shipwrecked or whatever you start with nothing you have to like punch the trees and <laughs> gather wood <laughs> then make like a axe or whatever <laughs> to cut more trees and build like a, a hut or whatever to live and then you like you know you, you try to like you know like uh, survive the like you know the island there's like a lot of uh, like you know uh, stuff in the island like you know like a lot of wild animals and stuff you have to survive and uh, gather food and water and whatever you know those type of movie story game whatever you call them you know like we've seen them a lot and there's also another um like you know aspect of this is like like a survival game where like you know a lot of people are taken to like a random island they just abandon them there and like you know gives them like certain abilities or certain stuff and says like oh you guys have to fight against each other and survive the one who will survive in the end will be the winner or whatever the hell you know all, all that type of stuff i remember i think like batum was one of had like a story like that batum the anime you know like it had like a plot like that as far as i remember was it an island i think it was an island i don't remember and they had like you know, special abilities or whatever on them there's a lot of animes like this you know like anime mangas that has this type of a 
um like a story i think there was another manga that i read it doesn't has have an anime that it, but it was pretty similar to that i think it was called the cage of eden or something let me check cage of eden yeah i think so i think that was the name uh yeah there you go teenage survivors of a plane crash it was a cage of eden it was a pretty entertaining manga not gonna lie i read the whole thing and it, I thought I don't think this has an anime. It was kind of like that, you know, abandoned in an island and like a like a um, like a survival game starts that type of thing. That was what Kaido was talking about. You know, he was freaking out. He was like, "Oh my god, everyone's going to start killing each other now after this." <laughs> You've seen too much anime and read too many manga. So yeah, now <clears throat> after that, obviously one of the biggest <clears throat> problems here is Mera because he's going to she's going to eat everything. <laughs> And yeah okay so obviously the question comes up is why is this situation like this you know like psyche was there why wasn't psyche able to do anything and uh, okay before that we see how um what's her, his name uh, psycho says like oh the the ship has like some kind of automatic tracking system or whatever ais system and they're going to like you know, easily rescue me and i'm one of the uh like, you know world's leading clogger mer merits and uh, uh, uh yeah uh, the uh, I'm someone important like that so obviously they're not going to leave me alone they're going to uh, bring a search party very soon and we'll be there So yeah you know like I'm, I'm not going to do anything I'm just going to keep sitting here waiting for the rescue team to come and here Psyche says like yeah it won't be possible because this is like a random island in the middle of nowhere no one is be, will be able to realize we're here now she he recounts the tale of what happened uh, is the first thing that happened is Mera went crazy with the food <laughs> and Psyche fell seasick obviously he's denying it he's like oh I'm not seasick but everyone's like yeah you are seasick and there you go because of the seasickness um, so many things that actually went wrong here first of all uh, the seasickness if uh, Yumeha did not throw away the medicines he would have been fine she threw away the medicine okay after getting sick, uh, Kokomi takes out his hairpin and bam, there you go, his powers go crazy, the whole ship gets completely destroyed and uh, yeah, he wakes up in the middle of the ocean, underwater and he, he grabs everyone, he's able to get everyone out of there and because he was not feeling okay of his condition, he wasn't able to teleport themselves to some place safe or anything like that, that's why he only was able to be in the pantry to the island for the food like you know shortage okay and yeah they were like in the middle of nowhere no one would be and it's like a long way from land so that's why he's like yeah no one's going to come here it's impossible so after that mm, i love how obviously like his you know what his main problem was here no one knows about his powers if people know knew about his powers, he could have just been like, "Oh, yeah, I'm here. I'm going to teleport you guys out of here." Since he cannot do that, you know, he he needs to somehow make like you know, like like you know, transport everyone in a way so that no one gets to know that he has his power. So he cannot just teleport them in the middle of the day. They will realize. So when they're sleeping or something like that, and he also talks about how he cannot even do that because you know like they'll probably end up in the middle of the street and like you know like appearing if they teleport them and he says i could teleport everyone when they're asleep solving them instantly but that's a no-go waking up in an unlocked unlo location would be too unnatural there you go so he cannot do that and it's funny how he just goes back home he's just like on his bed sleeping and thinking about it and the dad is like, oh, what are you doing? And Psyche so went to, like, you know, in a vacation. And Psyche so is like, oh, I'm just stranded, you know, like, that's why I'm here. <laughs> and he goes back again in the, in the morning. There you go. All right. Now, after that, um, the next day, like, <laughs> Kaido's going crazy. He's like, oh, my God, the killing game will start anytime soon. And it's like, mainly day two and then he's like you know he's freaking out and uh, obviously psycho is just looking outside you know and, and everyone's thinking like oh he probably feels responsible 
that was actually and um, you know like who was some kind of ghost to him and he's like oh you know everything's okay it's not your fault but obviously because it's him he's like oh i'm not thinking about that you know we'll be fine i'm not eating that peasant food <laughs> and i'm not doing anything like that they leave after that and uh, yeah and then we get to see like you know mera's missing everyone thinks that mera has fall victim not everyone kaido thinks that you know because he's thinking about the killer game or the survival game but oh my god there's a freaking snake and mera comes in kills the snake and he she has somehow like you know like is wearing like you know those tribal clothes and everyone's like what is going on here i don't know how she forget to talk she forgot to talk as well <laughs> and oh god somehow uh, somehow yumara is able to understand what she's saying and she hands them over some food some random grass <laughs> mushroom and like you know like some dubious look looking stuff and everyone's like oh my god like you know he, he brought food for us that's so nice now like they already told like you know like they already explained it that how mera has eaten all the food but like you know who else who thought that they were talking about the food in the ship he didn't realize they were talking about the food in here in the pantry that's why she brought all those like the random dubious looking herbs mushrooms and whatever so yeah and everyone's freaking out and they're like oh my god like mera ate everything everyone's depressed and all and psyche our savior uh he he brought all the food and kind of like you know randomly just scattered them on the water so they come here it's like pre-packaged food like canned food and everything and everyone's very happy everyone's like yeah we have food here and uh, even cattle and uh, like you know like a like a uh, can opener everything's here <laughs> and everyone's talking thinking like oh it's because of teruhashi because god loves her so much and uh, yeah so here we come up with an idea that why not make a raft and psyche was thinking like oh that's impossible at the beginning he was thinking like that but then he was like you know what it's a good idea we'll make a raft go in the middle of the ocean obviously if it's the middle of the ocean there'll be ocean everywhere and no one will be able to understand where they are what i'm going to do is teleport them in, in such a location i'm going to teleport them from here to there and no one will be able to understand that i teleported them which is a good plan you know like he can easily cover the distance that quickly like that and no one will even know so he brings all the diy goods you know uh, just like that in the shore and yeah everyone starts working on the raft now and uh, obviously kaido's freaking out kaido's like oh my god this saw everyone's going to use it for killing everyone you know like he's still in his head the killing survival like you know, thing is getting on his head and everyone's like you know like a few of them are cutting trees few like you know kaido's uh, gathering their water bottles to kind of you know like make it like more floating a buoy like you know like it, kind of help it float the raft will be kept afloat because of that and obviously yumahara is just freaking out at everything she's like oh my god you're so good at this after that they try to go and ask uh what's his name psycho for help but no psycho you know like psycho's kind of in his head is kind of going crazy he's thinking like you know like you know he's obviously hungry he's like i'm going to eat like a crab because it's luxury food <laughs> and everyone's asking him for help and uh, oh my god this fight part was so funny teduhashi's like oh can you please eat you know and can you please help us a little bit you know and uses her aura and this part was so unexpected i was not expecting that at all Psycho's like, I thought this was going to happen, you know. Psycho was like, oh, who? And you know, like she, he's like, all right, I'm going to do it. And I was like, yeah, that's what's going to happen. Completely came out with a such an unexpected development here. This like pride does not do good in circumstances like this. Daga to tovaru. Psycho says, isn't the hair enough? Like I said, he looks so much like Kishibe Rohan now that I'm looking at him. The one thing I despise more than anything else is being told what to do. Wow. No, now get out of my sight. 
and Teruhashi my charms didn't work on him. Like his his pride is so high that even Teruhashi like you know thinks it's not working on him. Crazy. Actually, haven't I been getting less attention since we got here? <laughs> it is true because like I mean, Kaido after that, just after that, Kaido says that was completely useless. <laughs> wow. Oh god. Yeah, that was unexpected totally. The whole Daga Kotowaru, I was not expecting that. Okay, now they kind of think that Mera is going to eat their food. They can quickly go towards Mera and see Mera's doing something to the food. And which kind of freaks out. But Teru, she's like, okay, you know what? Let's see, like, look at this. He's, she's actually bringing food. She wants to become friends with us. And we see everyone trying to tame Mera by giving her food. <laughs> she gets scared, you know, after <laughs> Kubayasu comes with the saw. And I was like, what the hell are you doing? We're trying to tame her. <laughs> you know, like, like, look at her. Like, you know, she's scared and everything. And Teru, she's like, oh, here you go. Here's a little food. Come, let's eat together. And like, you know, like petting her and feeding her. And Saiki's like, what is going on here? <laughs> oh boy and then Teru, uh, like you know Mera also starts helping us out this is such a weird like you know like I, I feel like this is like a um like yeah they totally like you know made this like a whole survival like an you know, island thing where you know usually in these type of situations in animes or like you know uh or like you know, movies like this like like that's the island where they get stranded on there's always some natives over there who they kind of befriend and like you know one of the natives becomes like very, their good very good friend and kind of help them out or something like that it's something like that that's happening here it's so crazy that they're doing it like this and yeah and yeah uh, with mera's help everyone's working extremely well and uh, yeah so after that everyone goes to sleep psyche kind of makes it more stronger like puts like some uh, like iron rods and stuff inside it and then we suddenly see um, Psycho kind of going towards the forest. I'm not sure what he's going to do now. He's obviously he's very weak and like you know very tired. I wonder what he's going to do. He's going towards deeper into the forest. We'll see. But that was it. That was uh, my reaction to these two episodes, episode number five and six. So this is going to continue in the next episode. So yeah, we'll see what happens. So that's it. Thank you for watching. This was my reaction to the disastrous life of Psyche K, season two, episode number five and six. If you guys enjoyed this video, be sure to press the like button, subscribe. If you're new to the channel or you haven't subscribed, comment down below anything you want to say, anything you want to let me know, and I'll check them out. That is it. Thank you for watching, and I'll see you guys next week with two more episodes. Until then, goodbye and have a nice day.